Hey, what's going on guys? This is Tabmock99. Now today's video is going to be about a number of Mortal Kombat comics. Some of them are well known, and some of them are pretty obscure. Way back when, I did a video talking about the Mortal Kombat Malibu comics. That led to a comment by Ed Guy. Just started collecting some MK stuff, then I found this channel. Saw your video about the Malibu published comics, and I'm wondering if there are any other reading materials that are worth reading and essential in a collection. Can you make a vid about it? Not a problem, Ed. That's exactly what we'll do in today's video. Now before we get into it, I do want to thank Scorpions Comics for generously donating this t-shirt to me at last year's C2E2. Here, check the back. Guys, make sure you check out their website at www.scorpioncomics.com, where you can check out the latest issues and also back orders. A lot of times, they get exclusive covers. So if you're going to order comics anyway, make sure you get it from Scorpion Comics. So I do want to start out with one piece of trivia about the Mortal Kombat comics by Malibu. A little known fact is that some of the comics had the Comics Code Authority seal printed on them, while others didn't. The ones without the seal are actually better because they're printed on high quality glossy paper. The ones with the seal are printed on lower quality pulp paper. So if you're collecting Mortal Kombat comics and you're trying to figure out what the difference is, that's it. Also, the ones with the Comics Code Authority seal tend to have a barcode on the cover. Other than that, there are no differences between these. Everything else is identical. With one exception, Goro, Prince of Pain number one, which has blue for the one without the seal and yellow for the one with the seal. Also, I do want to give a huge shout out to Total MK, who told me about Goro, Prince of Pain number zero. Released only in Australia, this volume collects all three issues from the regular Goro, Prince of Pain miniseries. So again, shout out to Total MK for the information on this one. Okay, so let's move on to the first official Mortal Kombat comics. I mean the Mortal Kombat 1 and 2 comics released by the co-creator himself, John Tobias. These are the ones that were advertised in the actual Mortal Kombat arcade game. If you were lucky for people to stop playing the game long enough for you to catch this screen, this is what you got. You could order it by mail directly from Midway. This turned out to be a great way to build up hype for the game, something they continued doing for Mortal Kombat 2. Now, these comics were the best. They were written and drawn by someone who actually understood the story and the characters, the guy who designed everything. So, everything in these comics was totally consistent with the games. Unlike the Malibu comics and some other adaptations, there was no question as to whether or not these comics were canon. They absolutely were. Tons more gamers who never even ordered the comic saw snippets of it anyway, because select panels were reprinted in the instruction manuals on the home versions. A couple of the pages were even reprinted in one of the strategy guides. Now, this marketing strategy was brilliant, because even people who were hyped up for the games already were now getting hyped up for the comics. This got even more fans to pick them up. I really can't stress enough the popularity of these comics. It lasted for years. The entire comic even appeared as unlockables in the crypt in Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. Artwork from the original Mortal Kombat comic book, released in 1992. Previously only available by mail order through Midway for a mere $3. This extremely rare MK treasure is now available in its entirety for you to unlock. Now, during MK3, unfortunately, the team got too busy to do a comic. But fortunately, they found another way to build up hype. See, there was this new thing called the internet, and they could interact directly with the fans and share pictures of the game before it was out. In the way, this marked the end of an era, and the beginning of a new one. And besides, doing a comic about the third tournament might have been tricky. As MK3 was being upgraded to Ultimate MK3, the story also would have had to be revised to account for the new characters being added. And the story would have gotten changed around again with the release of MK Trilogy. So, with MK3, they kind of missed out on the whole comic thing. And also with Mortal Kombat 4, there just wasn't a comic book in time for the arcade release. But it did come out just in time for the home versions. In fact, this was offered as an incentive for pre-ordering the game. Even after the pre-order period, they must have had some left over because there were some limited editions of the PC version that included the comic book as a pack-in. Not to mention the Nintendo 64 port got one of these as well. They were pretty hard to come by. When they say limited edition, they really mean it. With this comic, John Tobias developed the story for it, but someone else, Ted Adams, wrote the actual script and dialogue. Surprisingly enough, the saga of the Mortal Kombat 4 comic doesn't end there. At some point, a user on MortalKombatOnline.com named Gusland shared some pics and even some scans of another Mortal Kombat 4 comic available exclusively in Brazil. Now, my sister-in-law happens to be Brazilian, and she helped me get all four issues, which were collected here in one trade paperback. Once I got them, I scanned them all into the computer. But the best part is that another Mortal Kombat Online user, named Zentile, translated them all into English. So, shoutouts to both Gusland and Zentile. Now, I'm not really big into piracy, so usually I don't share scans. But since these were never released in English anyway, I will share scans of these ones. So, check out the link in the description below. 
Oh yeah, my favorite panel shows Scorpion yelling his famous catchphrase. Come on over here! So after a several year hiatus, the next comic that we would get was from MK Deception. Now, this one never really quite took off, but we did get a couple previews. Like this one, from the MK Deception Strategy Guide by Brady Games. When you flip to the end of the book, they included a first look at the Mortal Kombat comic book series by Wham Entertainment. No dialogue here, just high quality artwork. At the very end, there's a splash page that says it'll ship to comic stores everywhere in March 2005. Well, that never happened. But we did get this other preview in the limited edition Mortal Kombat Deception controllers by Newbie. It's a small comic featuring mostly black and white art with Onaga as the narrator revealing that he's been watching events unfold from beyond the grave. And he's preparing to make his return. After that, we get some other artists showcasing their work, this time in color. So you can kind of tell that there was a lot more planned for this that ultimately fell through. It's like we got a taste of things to come, only it never came. Well, the next comic that we'd get was Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe. Now, there's two things about this one that you want to know. First, you had to order the collector's edition of this game in order to get the comic book, titled Beginnings. John Tobias himself was brought back to do the comic, so the collector's edition is a must-have for that reason alone. Second, it also includes a special cover done by the comic's legend, Alex Ross. Seriously, that guy's work is just incredible. The Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe is not exactly the high point of the Mortal Kombat series, but it is an important milestone. I mean, think about it. This was Midway's last game. This was their last hurrah. It was also their first partnership with Warner Brothers. Now, as Midway was getting ready to file bankruptcy, Warner Brothers used this game as an opportunity to decide whether or not it wanted to acquire Mortal Kombat. And it did. If this game was a test, Mortal Kombat passed with flying colors. It was under Warner Brothers' direction that the next Mortal Kombat comics, Mortal Kombat X, would bridge the gap between Mortal Kombat 9 and Mortal Kombat X to get readers caught up on what happened in the new timeline. The writers, namely Sean Kittleson, was basically given free reign to do whatever he wanted and go nuts with it. Published with a total of 12 issues under the DC label, this is without a doubt the longest running Mortal Kombat comic series to date. The game and the comics were being developed concurrently by different teams working on the story, so this hectic schedule led to a few inconsistencies between the game and the comics. Here's an example. Scorpion's wife and child were given the names Kana and Jubei in the comics. But the games would come to name them Harumi and Satoshi. But overlooking a few details like that, the story from the comics and from the new timeline of the games actually fit together quite nicely. Even more so now that Kittleson has been hired to work on the game story. Now, things that had previously only happened in the comics are being referenced directly in the games. For example, how Sub-Zero got his scar. Now, all 12 issues were collected into a set of three trade paperbacks called Blood Ties, Blood Gods, and Blood Island. So, these are highly collectible and highly readable. The cool thing is, Sean Kittleson even told us that even more comics had been planned. I can share a secret yeah. that, that I've never shared. This would, will be an, ex an exclusive. I would love this exclusive. A Mortal exclusive. Podcast exclusive. Uh, I, I was actually, I never wrote a second season of the Mortal Kombat X comic books. But if I had, uh, my, my story for them was Onaga. Like, and we kind of hint at the end of the MKX comics that, like, Goro's around, Dagon and the Red Dragon are around, and these guys, they worship Onaga, and they want to bring Onaga back. And Goro becomes the vessel oh, in the new timeline. Oh, right, because at the end of the MKX comics, he goes to the Red Dragon and says... He has no arms. He had his... Yeah. He, Kotal Kahn ripped his arms off, mm -hmm. cut his arms off. So he's, he's, he's been completely humiliated and debased, and he'll do anything... And he thinks that he's going to get these powers via Onaga, but it turns out he's just going to be the vessel for Onaga. Wow. And spoiler alert, because it'll never get written. I mean, we're four years out yeah. from the, this. It's done. The whole I, timelines. I, I wrote a whole game. Yeah, I blew up the timeline at this point. <laughs> so uh, I, I can't go back. I did it to myself. But uh, but no, like he, the, the idea would be that, you know, Goro would come out of this with his arms intact again. That, that through mm. various means and and whatnot that we would have a, a goro transformation and then exercise onaga from goro and we'd have our forearm goro back but we'd also have a fight with onaga to contend with that's tight it was gonna be dope dude i am Man. i'm super bummed well uh, i guess there regardless i would i would argue that that means canonically that that is what uh happened i mean it's so heavily in implied that timeline at the, yeah. like the final and it had to have just been resolved yeah, well, and, and I sort of, I tried to think of it that way. I
And on top of that, there was also going to be an MK11 comic, but things didn't quite work out for that one either. We got some really subtle hints about this when comics writer Steve Orlando posted a random photo of MK2, and a user questioned him, So, you're writing a Mortal Kombat comic? He didn't answer, but later on he posted again, When I someday write Mortal Kombat. So, maybe that was just wishful thinking. Then again, maybe not. Another comics writer, Gail Simone, did a really long tweet thread about how she was starting to work on the Mortal Kombat comics and My Little Pony at the same time. So much so that she was actually starting to have dreams about Mortal Kombat My Little Pony mashup. She talked about it at great length, but in the end, the Mortal Kombat project didn't happen. Warner Brothers didn't feel they could split their efforts between both the game and the comic and do it right this time. So, they had to let this one go. Now, have you ever thought to yourself that the Mortal Kombat movie is one of the greatest video game movies ever made, and that there should be a comic book adaptation of that? Well, believe it or not, there actually is. Kind of. Unofficially. See, in the summer of 1996, Comic Bonbon, a Japanese exclusive, released a 10-page comic book adaptation of the Mortal Kombat movie in manga form. Now, this thing is like a dream come true. There's a lot of shout-outs I have to give here. Thanks to Ice Blossom for letting me know this thing even exists. Thanks to Nick the MK fan from the Beijing Combat Club for scanning all the pages in. And shout out to Kori Maru and Wikipay Tan for translating this into English. So again, even though I'm not one to share scans, because this never got an English release, I will go ahead and share this one too. Check out the link down in the description. Okay, so another one you guys have to check out is Ho Sung Pak, the comic book. Not only did he play Liu Kang in Mortal Kombat, but he was getting ready to cast himself as a martial arts superstar. Back in the 90s, he was in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, WMAC Masters, and now his own comic. In addition to the main storyline, the comic also features some behind-the-scenes pics of him in the Ninja Turtle costume. And it includes some photos of him hanging out with his Mortal Kombat buddies in real life, Daniel Pacina and Rich Divizio. So for any Mortal Kombat collector, this one is kind of a must-have for your collection. Speaking of Rich Divizio, another comic you guys have to check out is Mongrel. Rich Divizio is actually the model for this comic, and on top of that, this comic is also drawn by Andy Kadelka, an artist who worked on the official Mortal Kombat comic and made a lot of contributions to the games too. The follow-up, Son of a Bitch, completes the series. If you're lucky, you might even be able to find a trade paperback somewhere. Now here's one that's really out there, the June 1996 issue of PS Preventative Maintenance Monthly. I had to look up what this even is. So this is a series of United States Army technical bulletins that's been published since 1951. It's a monthly magazine, but it also includes some comic book style art to illustrate proper preventative maintenance methods. This thing is way better than it has a right to be. My favorite part is how they give the characters new names like Iceman, Giro, and Raider. Actually, scratch that. My new favorite part is how many times they actually have Raider saying, I don't think so. I don't. Shout out to Dr. Doggy Style for showing me that one from his personal Mortal Kombat collection when I visited the Netherlands last year. Thanks, dude. So, another one you guys might want to check out, Model Combat. This is actually a special issue of the Blonde Avenger. Other than the title, there's really not a whole lot of connection here to Mortal Kombat. Other comics kind of like this are Revenge of Wonderland number 3, with their characters cosplaying as Scorpion and Sub-Zero on alternate covers, and Rags number 4, that includes two characters cosplaying as both of them on one cover. So even though you can't judge a book by its cover, you might want to pick those up anyway, especially if you're a hardcore collector. Another thing you might want to do is follow the careers of the people involved. Like Sean Kittleson, he no longer works on the Mortal Kombat team, but now he's working on his own passion project called Heart Attack. In this series, people have used gene therapy to save lives from a disease, only to give the people superhuman powers. But this leads to their being discriminated against and even being denied basic human rights from the government. So definitely check out Heart Attack. Another one you gotta check out is Skitter Comic. This one is being made by John Vogel, who's still on the Mortal Kombat team. I like this one a lot because it's free, it's a webcomic, and it's actually funny. Sometimes it's about insects, and sometimes it's about John Vogel himself and his family. So check it out at www.skittercomic.com. And be sure to become a patron at patreon.com forward slash skitter. And shoutouts to MK Dan or MK Universe for hooking me up with this totally sweet physical copy of Skitter. Thanks, man. So, in a previous video, I gave a shout out to the Diaz brothers, Philip Diaz and Brandon Diaz, for making that totally sweet Mortal Kombat invitation scroll. At CombatCon, they also had these parody t-shirts, Air Cage and Air Scorpion, available. So I definitely want to take this opportunity and plug their projects as well. 
Some of their latest work includes Magic Cop, The Lost Pages, and Myths of the Lost Pages. So make sure to follow the brothers at www.zadecomics.com, and also keep up with their projects at Indiegogo so you can fund their latest work. Now, there is one more comic that I wanted to show you. For this one, I'm going to take you all the way back to the beginning, even before the first Mortal Kombat comic release. This comic strip is about Raiden, and it was made by John Tobias for an internal Midway newsletter. Now, how this got released to the public years later, it was thanks to some research by Rayan Ali for his NBA Jam book and posted on his Twitter account last year. So, shout outs to Rayan Ali, and make sure you pick up a copy of NBA Jam the book. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Well, guys, that's about it for this video. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Let me know what you thought looked to be the most interesting comic. If you do expand your collection, if you do pick up any of these comics, let me know, too, which one you decided to pick up. Make sure you leave a like on the video. That sure helps me for the algorithm for this channel. And go ahead and subscribe to this channel as well and check out some of my other videos I've done. I'm always talking about Mortal Kombat on this channel. Until next time, this is Tabmok99. See you in the funny pages.